So, are you enjoying the back and forth? I mean, hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. <laughs> Today we bring you another installment, I believe we're on number three now, of Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Yes, we're reading this often. <sighs> Hidden Hamster. Someone had let Dipu's hamster out of the cage and she couldn't find it anywhere. Keep looking, encouraged Mom. Hamsters hide in all sorts of funny places. So Dipu searched all morning. She looked her in doll's house and even got Dad to prize open a floorboard. But there were no little sounds of scuffling feet. By lunchtime, she was tired, worried, and hungry. Can I have an apple, Mom? she asked. Help yourself, said Mom. Dipu went to the dish. There were four apples in it, and one of them looked a bit furry. Dipu looked closer. It moved. The other apples had little teeth marks in them. I found my hamster, cried Dipu with relief. At least he won't need any lunch. Okay, dokie, the hamster found himself some apples. At least that was a cute story. And I like the little doll house there. That would be a cute place to find a hamster. Mm -hmm. I also like the variety of people in this book so far. And not just fantasy people, but real people. It's a uh, very eclectic and multinational and all the art has been very good so far in case i haven't been stating that i haven't given you a lot of time because i'm mostly going for the shock value of and the end and the <laughs> end and so they did the doll's tea party mommy doll had spent a busy morning baking cookies amanda doll popped one into her mouth yummy she said mommy doll slapped her hand naughty she said wait until our tea party but Mommy Doll felt sad. All those delicious cookies and no one to eat them but greedy little Amanda and baby Billy. I wish we could have a visitor, she sighed. She set the table and was just putting the cookies on the table when there was a knock on the doll's house door. Amanda ran to open it. A funny wooden man stood on the doorstep. He had a wooden hat on. Good afternoon, said the little man. I'm Mr. Noah. I live in the Ark, and I've always wanted to see inside a doll's house. Would you mind if I came in and looked around? Mommy Doll smiled and opened the door wide. Welcome, she said. I have just made lots of delicious cookies, and I should be delighted if you would join us for a tea party. Hmm. You know what's interesting about this story? Is it's very much what a little girl would come up with, especially if she had, like, an extra doll from her brother or something. Yeah, but wait until I turn the page. There's actually continuity here. Oh. Mr. Noah is missing. Oh, bugger. <laughs> the Noah's Ark stood in the toy shop window. It was being sold cheaply because Mr. Noah was missing. Nobody knew what had happened. When the owner of the shop had unpacked the Ark, Mr. Noah simply wasn't there. What no one knew was that Mr. Noah had gone visiting. In the back of the shop was an old doll's house. And Mr. Noah, who had never been in a house before, had climbed out of the packing box and knocked on the doll's house door. At the very moment when the toy shop owner was putting incomplete 20% off original price on the Ark, Mr. Noah was sitting down for a tea party with all the doll family. Very soon, a small girl visited the shop. Look, Daddy, said Melanie. There's a cheap Noah's Ark for sale. That's lucky, said Melanie's father. I think I can just about afford it. The toy shop man explained that Mr. Noah was missing and started to pack the figures into a cardboard box. Wait for me, puffed a little voice, though the humans didn't hear it. Mr. Noah ran across the toy shop floor and jumped into the box. Just in time, the lid slammed shut. Look, Daddy, said Melanie later as they unpacked the ark. Mr. Noah isn't missing at all. He's here. Okay. Hey, that's cool. Also, I like the art. It looks like it's all by the same person this time. There's only one illustrator credited, so unlike Two Minute Stories, we have one author and one illustrator. Apparently, by only having one of each, they could afford full-color illustrations. Apparently. Everything's really nice. Right? They really do look like toys, so these are the kind of toys that wouldn't have any kind of moving parts to them. No, they're called figures. Commonly known as statues, like early My Little Pony dolls. Hmm. Very early Gen 1 ones weren't even colorful. They were like regular horses. Hmm. So that was the original idea. And then everything else happened. <laughs> the Glass Swan. 
The glass swan sat on Mrs. Smith's mantle between two china dogs. It felt very unhappy, for though the dogs sat, a dog should, guarding the mantle, the swan sat as if it were swimming, only there was no water. One day Mrs. Smith's little granddaughter, Emily, came to stay. She loved the glass swan. Poor swan, she said, you should be swimming on a lake. I know what I can do. And she ran to the shops to buy something. She came back with a shiny round glass mirror. The swan had a lake at last. Wow. I just keep being amazed at how like quick these things are. Because mm -hmm. these are like, these are truly two minute stories. Yes. Truly. I mean, it's like a bag of chips. You just keep going. And that's a very nicely rendered swan, though it doesn't look like glass to me. It definitely looks like a sting on a mirror, but it doesn't look like the swan itself is made out of glass. No, it does not. It, Unless um, if you think of like the Fenton art glass pieces where you have the colored glass. Hmm. It does look very realistic, though. Mm hmm. Toby Jug. Toby Jug sat on a shelf in Mr. Watkins' house with 20 other Toby Jugs. He had a jolly, smiling face, but in fact he was rather sad, for no one really noticed him. All they ever said was, What a magnificent collection of Toby Jugs you have, Mr. Watkins. I don't want to be a collection, said Toby Jug. I want to be me. One day Mr. Watkins came home with some more Toby Jugs. I haven't room for all these new ones, he said. I'll have to sell one of the old ones. Mrs. Watkins looked at the shelf. Don't sell that fellow, will you? She said, pointing to Toby Jug. I've always liked him, and he'd do nicely for my flowers. She took him off the shelf and filled him with sweet peas. Toby Jug was thrilled. Now everybody notices him and says, Mr. Watkins, that's the jolliest Toby Jug we have ever seen. Yay, more stories. <laughs> Lots more. Performing Seal, retired. Hmm. Yes, welcome to a full page story. We haven't had one of these since Jack and the Beanstalk. Hmm. Lucy was playing ball in her yard. She threw the ball high in the air and it fell, not at her feet, but over the fence in the yard next door. Phooey, said Lucy. I'll have to ask our new neighbors to throw it back. But before she could do that, the ball suddenly came sailing over the fence. Thank you, called Lucy. Hong Kong, came the reply. Lucy was surprised. It didn't sound like someone saying hello. In fact, it didn't sound like a person at all. Hong Kong, the voice went again. Lucy fetched a ladder and looked over the fence. Whatever could it be? A dog? A pig? A boy playing tricks? But when Lucy saw what it was, she had the shock of her life. She could never have imagined that her new neighbors would have such an exciting pet. For it wasn't a dog. It was a seal. Oh, cried Lucy. How wonderful. Do you want to play ball? Honk, 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 agreed the seal, flippering over to the fence. So Lucy threw the ball to the seal, and the seal tossed it back to her. It was all tremendous fun, and Lucy's new neighbor was also pleased. Stanley was a circus seal, and he got terribly bored when he retired. Now he's found a playmate again, Lucy explained to her mother. Interesting. Also, I don't think seals go honk. It's more of a arc. Reminds me more of the penguin from um, Here Comes Santa Claus or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the old uh, Ranklin Bass claymations. Mm. And I noticed the thing about the art, it has like really nice strokes in it for the coloring. See the texturing there? It's really nice. One more. Cinderella. And credited to Peralt. P-E-R-R-A-U-L-T. There was once a girl called Cinderella who had two jealous stepsisters. Because the girl was so much more beautiful than either of them, they kept her out of sight, working in the kitchen. One day the stepsisters went off to the prince's grand ball, leaving Cinderella sitting by the hearth. After they had left, Cinderella's fairy godmother happened to call. Cinderella told her how much she'd love to go to the ball. That can easily be arranged, said her godmother. And straight away she turned a pumpkin into a golden coach and some rats into coachmen. Cinderella was given a glittering white silk ball gown, but warned to be back home by midnight. When Cinderella arrived at the ball, the prince noticed her at once, and they danced together all evening. But then the clock struck midnight, and a dreadful thing happened. The coach and horses changed back into a pumpkin and rats, and Cinderella, running down the palace steps, found herself once more in rags. In a rush, she dropped one of her little glass slippers. 
The prince picked it up and decided to find its owner. He went round the whole kingdom until he came to Cinderella's home. The two stepsisters each tried to force their foot into the slipper, but they couldn't. Then it was Cinderella's turn. The slipper fitted perfectly, and the prince knew he had found his own true love at last. Hmm, that was a pretty good summary of that story. It was a pretty decent summary. The art is interesting. Um, I'm guessing that's the footsman, I think they were called? The one in the blue jacket. And the prince is the one in the red. Yes, the prince is the one in red, and the one in blue is his attendant. Hmm. And obviously the girl is Cinderella. And they're both wearing gold shoes. They don't look that gold to me. Mm, they look pretty gold to me, but they could also be a brown color with highlights. To differentiate them from the floor. Mm -hmm. Oh, I actually remember the next two stories coming up. But those are for another installment. Next time on Ember's Reading Room. <laughs> and this has been another installment of Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Are you hooked on this craziness yet? Check for an Amazon link if you'd like to buy it. Just want to go shopping because that can be another form of craziness? Check the Ebates link. And per usual, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>